Let's do it. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Prep Rewind show here on another Friday night of high school football. This time, it's quarterfinal action around the state, and we had plenty of great scores, upsets, all you can imagine. It was all taking place here on this Friday night. I'm your host, Jeff Ekstrom. Along with me is our fearless leader and sports editor, Clark Grell, as well as Prep Extra writer, Luke Mullen. Uh, guys, of course, welcome aboard, and I mean, another great night of football. Um, Luke, you're out uh covering a Pierce and Ashland Greenwood and Clark, you were in Wilbur as they took on Hastings St. Cecilia. Let's start with both of those games because they are both significant scores uh, in their own outright. Luke, we're going to start with you just because Ashland Greenwood top seed falls to Pierce 35, 28, the Blue Jays score with about six minutes to go to pull off the upset. I mean, what'd you see there over there in Pierce? Yeah. So, you know, for starters for Ashland, it's, it's pretty heartbreaking for them an undefeated season um, being that number one seed and just kind of having the look, the feel of it being their year to kind of take it all. And then they get a really rough quarterfinal draw against the defending champs. You know, they had two regular season losses, but I think the talent on this Pierce team, anybody in C1 would not have wanted to play them, you know, push it off as long as they can. Um, so ultimately to me, this game was, was just a testament to how strong both these teams were. You know, you could probably flip a coin and the game might go a different way. You can, you know, change the outcome of a few things. And, you know, they, they were just about as close as you can get, you know, game-winning touchdown with under 20, 30 seconds left. Um, just goes to show, super impressed with Ben Brommer, uh, Nebraska football commit, tallest guy on the field, most athletic in my opinion, and just, just showed up all over the place with huge, huge catches um, that that 35 yarder with with about 30 seconds, 40 seconds left, that was the big one that that put them right there in position to to get the game winning touchdown. And so for Pierce, this is really, you know, coming off a state title. They look like a state title team again. They they might be getting that home game next week against Battle Creek as well, who did beat them in the regular season. I'll note. Um, so that'll be a huge revenge game, big game for them as well. And so just to kind of shake up the whole C1 landscape, you know, having the defending champ come out of the top side of the bracket is, is pretty big and, you know, commiserations to Ashland on a great season, just ending a little bit earlier than they would have liked. Certainly. And yeah, like you mentioned, they'll take on battle Creek and Pierce will get another home game. And I think that can be very uh, important as they move to the semis, because there's an argument to be made that the semis, is even more pressure packed than the actual final. Cause it's all about getting to that final. Uh, so certainly that'll be interesting. And now Clark moving over to you, you're over in Wilbur and I bet they are partying tonight. They come out with a big victory over Hastings St. Cecilia 32 to 13. They move on to the semis. Um, and Clark, what'd you see there? Yeah, I think they are getting ready to celebrate. I'm, I'm parked not too far from the uh, Fox foxhole saloon, I think. So they're getting ready to, party there uh uh defense um Wilbur Claytonia did it with defense I think um they held Hastings St. Celia to 141 total yards uh 67 came on one pass play that was a touchdown right before halftime that got Hastings St. Cecilia some new life brought him in within uh, 12 to 7 um and as Lynn Jurgens, the Wilbur Claytonia coach pointed out um in each of their four losses this year they've either they've led or they've been tied at halftime so Wilbur's been in those situations where they've seen some leads slip away and maybe that was on, you know, the, the sign was there. Maybe it was going to happen again there, but then uh, second half, um, they force a quick three and out. Um, Mason Combs returns a punt 60 yards to set up a touchdown. And then um, they enter, they get an interception on the next drive, go down the field and 11 plays and score. Um, but really, I mean, the, and, St. Celia's only other touchdown came on a kickoff return. So really they only scored seven points off of them uh, on the defense. And so quite an impressive performance by the defense uh, talking to coach Jurgens after the game, just kind of, they're playing really good right now. They were a 13 seed coming in, you know, what's the difference, what's changed. Um, he quite, I mean, quite simply, they're just healthy now. I mean, they, they were really injury riddled for a good part of the season. They got a lot of those guys back. They're still missing some guys, but, they're playing really strong and, and they got a really good quarterback. Mason Combs is a really nice back. They're really physical. And 
um, they, yeah, they just took it to St. Cecilia tonight. And, um, you know, that now they get Norfolk Catholic. Yeah. Who do you, what, how do you, how would you evaluate that matchup? Cause obviously that's giving me a stiff test. Uh, for yeah. Robert that's going to be a, yeah, that's going to be a much bigger test. Uh, North Fork Catholic, um, probably, you know, I don't know if Hastings St. Celia was really considered one of the, the teams to, you know, one of the top tier teams in C2. Um, this is Norfolk Catholic is definitely one of those teams. And so, uh, you know, going on the road, uh, will be tough. Um, but they got a lot of momentum right now and I, I think, um, they'll be up for the challenge, but, um, definitely will be their t- toughest game of the year. Most certainly on the other side of that C2 bracket Ord defeated Lincoln Lutheran 42, seven while Archbishop Bergen beat Aquinas 38, seven. That's on the other side of the C2 bracket. Uh, let's just then reset into class a, uh, plenty of stuff happened tonight. Omaha North continues their Cinderella run beating North Platte 35, 34. They continue the run of just close wins. Um, I mean, how would you, how would you guys view that win from on North? Um, they, uh, we'll get Gretna, who defeated Elkhorn South 14-7. Luke, we'll start with you and your evaluation of those wins. Yeah, I mean, for Omaha North, you know, it, it was definitely going to be a, a different challenge. We spoke about that on the podcast, you know, making that bus trip out to North Platte. Can you bring the same level of intensity, you know, the same level of play that they did to beat Millard South? And clearly they were right there. They were just as good, you know, only one point separating them, so – just a tremendous playoff game. I'm sure everybody who's there, um, you know, appreciated seeing the level of play out there. And so for, for Omaha North, you know, they can just keep it going as long as possible. If they can, you know, win these close games against all these playoff teams, you know, there, there's no reason why they can't keep it going. Obviously coach Martin, he, he knows how to win in the playoffs. Um, you know, th- this team is just full of belief right now. How could you not be after the last couple of weeks, you know, the, the journey they've been on, and on the flip side, you've got Gretna and Alcorn South, just I'm sure an absolute physical, um, just kind of ball game out there, you know, leaving it all out there, probably going to be a little dinged up. Uh, Gretna will be going into next week. And so for, for both of those teams, I think, you know, especially Gretna would, would have assumed, you know, that they could get to this point in the season, but to be both in the semifinals, you know, looking at a trip to the class A title game, I think they're both going to feel very fortunate you know, not, not a whole ton of pressure, I think, on either team, just kind of out there with, with their best stuff, you know, having a great season and looking to see how far they can keep it going. Yeah, and Clark, let's talk about the other side of the Class A bracket then. Bell West won big tonight over Grand Island, 52-20. to 20, But then Omaha West Side crushed Burke, 42-3. to 3. So it's going to be Bell West and West Side. I mean, to me, that's – the more surprising result there is Westside just hammering Burke. I would have thought that would have been closer. You saw Burke last week. I mean, does that surprise you as much as it does me? Uh, the score definitely. I mean, maybe not so much Westside winning comfortably, but definitely the score. I mean, I Burke has some really nice offensive weapons. They they have a really good quarterback. So the fact that they only got three on Westside kind of shows you where Westside is. I I um. I mean, I was going to ask Luke that. I mean, wh- I, I think people were waiting for Westside to play. I, I don't know. I mean, they were kind of waiting for Westside to play a tough opponent, and then, and they got one here. Now now they get Bell West. I mean, what Luke, what, what do you make of – I mean, that's going to be quite a showdown next week. Yeah. I mean, you keep saying it. It's like Westside hasn't lost in two seasons. <laughs> like, clearly – Clearly, you know, they, they have a different team this year, but they have a lot of the same players, you know, the same formula um, to be that Class A title contender. And so, you know, coming out the last two weeks and basically scoring 100 points and allowing three, I mean, that, it, if that doesn't scream state title contender, you know, I, I don't know what does. You know, obviously the, the draw of the playoffs impacts things. And I think for Burke, um, you know, maybe their record, their seed was a little bit flattering to me. Um, I think there were some tougher teams that maybe could have challenged West Side a little bit more than they did. Um, you know, all credit to Burke, fantastic season to make the quarterfinals. Um, so to see Bell West and, and West Side in that matchup, yeah, definitely, you, you know, you think that that West Side defense has to be, you know, evaluated a little bit higher now considering what they've done in the playoffs so far. Definitely a more a more challenging test next week against all those guys from Bell West. 
Um, but definitely defense playing at a championship level, got some great playmakers on offense and it's, it shouldn't be any surprise to see that, you know, the defending champ making another run there in class A. Yeah. And I mean, third straight year that uh, it will be an all Metro final. The last time it wasn't was back in 2018 when Omar Burke defeated grand Island guys, let's move on down to class B a couple of area schools. Their seasons came to an end tonight. First, you have Elkhorn defeating Seward 35 20. And then I think even the, Bigger storyline, which I thought the game would be more competitive. Bennington shuts out Waverly 41 to nothing. Luke, we'll start with you. I mean, just on that side of the bracket, I mean, that's more surprising for me is Bennington just cruising by Waverly. Absolutely. I mean, that that was a game that kind of had trap game written all over it for Bennington, um, just in the sense that, you know, that, that Waverly team is so difficult to play in the quarterfinal round you know, some of the strengths on defense, the physicality, um, you know, just could have perhaps worn down Bennington a little bit, you know, gotten them in a, in a disadvantage, at, uh, at a disadvantage um, in terms of the game and everything. So to see Bennington just go out and control the game at home, you know, play how it needed to, um, to keep advancing, keep surviving and moving on. It just, it just really goes to show that they are just so far and large, the team to beat in class B. You know, obviously that matchup with Elkhorn, the defending champ, who's hardly done anything wrong all season, except for getting blown out by Bennington themselves. You know, it, it's it's kind of like, obviously, you know, you consider that that game should be close, you know, Elkhorn being able to make adjustments and the quality that they have as well. Um, but ultimately, it's just, I don't see anybody that can beat Bennington right now. They are just having one heck of a year. Um, you know, the talent all over the place on offense you know, the, the fact that they're only scoring 40 or 50 points, you know, they could they could put up 60 or 70, just the the level of guys that they have in there. Um, so total credit to Bennington, really impressive result out there. And yeah, it's it's hard to imagine anybody touching them right now. Uh, but yeah, then on the other side, you have Aurora defeating Scott's Bluff 34-14. They will take on Omaha Scott. The pesky Skyhawks, uh, defending state champs, they defeat Plattsmith 20 to 10, shutting down that running game uh, of Plattsmith. I mean, uh, Clark, I guess we'll go over to you. I mean, what do you take away from those results right there? It, I, I, yeah, I mean, I thought Scott, um, obviously Scott's playing really well right now. I mean, um, you know, they, they handled Norris really well last week and, and now getting Plattsmith. So I think that's going to be an interesting matchup um next week because you got two teams that are playing obviously aurora started a little slow to the season and now they've been rolling and and now you got scott who matt Terman he he always has that group ready to play in the playoffs and that, that's going to be quite a chess match i think when those two teams meet next week yeah most certainly it's gonna be a very fascinating one in class b and then Going back down to C1, we've already obviously touched upon Ashley Greenwood Pierce. But on the other side, you have Columbus Lakeview, who we mentioned last week might have been the hottest team in the playoffs. They continue that, a 23-20 to 20 upset over number three seed Boone Central, who, in fact, was my pre-playoff pick to win C1. But I also predicted that as my hot take of the week they would win, and so I was right. Um, but they take on Carney Catholic, who just – crushed wahoo 33 to 7 luke we'll start with you i mean obviously lakeview a big win but they were really hot as a team so well that's still surprising i don't know i might be more impressed with cardin catholic i thought wahoo was gonna give them more trouble than what it seemed they did yeah definitely the story for carnic catholic has to be their elite defense um you know they they proved it time and time again during the regular season well you know okay you get to playoffs can you do the same thing can you keep that same level and shut out boys town last week? I think it was a shutout till the fourth quarter today as well. Um, super impressive just to be able to do that over seven quarters um, against anybody in the playoffs. You know, we spoke about how deep, how solid the C one field is and, you know, boys town, no slouch either to, to score zero points. So yeah, Carney Catholic, you know, it, it depends how much they can keep that offense rolling, you know, be able to put up the points, um, you know, down the road against this Lakeview team. Um, but with the way that defense is playing, that is total credit to, you know, them as a C1 title contender. And, you know, Lake, Lakeview had a lot of close games during the regular season, a couple wins, couple losses, and, you know, pulling off that win over Boone Central. 
I think they're going to have, you know, the feeling amongst that team that, you know, everything they've been through, been through together, the ride they've been on, you know, with these tough playoff games, they're going to have that momentum. They're going to have that feeling amongst themselves of just being able to, to keep it going all the way um, to Memorial Stadium. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Most certainly. And then Clark will move on down to C2 as you can analyze that other matchup that will take on Wilbur. Uh, Ord just cruised by Lincoln Lutheran 42 to seven. Uh, great defense by the Chanticleers tonight held Lutheran to 118 yards. Uh, and then you got Archbishop Bergen, who's the runaway favor at the moment, defeating Aquinas 38 to seven. Based on what you know about those teams, I mean, that one could be a battle obviously Bergen will still be favored uh, but it could be pretty interesting because Ord's playing pretty good football right now yeah they are and I, it's a rematch of the last year's final I believe Luke right you covered that if I remember right um, yep I was there can, yep. yeah I mean Bergen I mean I didn't I didn't see how they got it done tonight but I mean to dominate Aquinas again I mean um, I mean, super impressive. I mean, obviously they are the favorites um, for a reason. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I think that again, I mean, I mean, you get to the point where all these semifinals and all these classes are, are super good, but I mean, I start thinking like, okay, yeah, Bell West, West side, fantastic matchup. Um, and then the, here's another one down a couple, a few classes lower where Ord Bergen, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think probably some, Offensive fireworks for sure in this game, probably next week is my guess. But, um, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I think Bergen, I, I think Bergen would be the favorite in that game, but um, obviously you don't want to count out the defending state champs. Yeah, most certainly. Uh, and that's our big recap for tonight of all those plenty of action. Make sure to check out all of our articles and game coverage uh, as well as state volleyball coverage has been going on on prepextra.com. But guys, before we go away, let's hand out some game balls. Uh, for, I'll start with my uh, – with mine first, I'm going to give it out to Ord's defense taking on uh, Lincoln Lutheran. They held the Warriors to 118 total yards, including only five rushing yards. Um, and the score that Lutheran had came in the fourth quarter. So it was almost a shutout uh, for Ord as they get the job done at home. And talking with Nate Wells on the phone about the game, he just praised his team about how physical they were up front and they really did win the battle. They rushed for 198 yards on offense too. Uh, but my game will go into the or defense and their dominance of Lincoln Luther tonight. Luke, we'll uh, go over to you. Who do you got? Yeah. So for the the game that I got to watch, got to give it to Ben Bramer. Um, just phenomenal game all over the place. I think he had about 135 of, of Pierce's 200 passing yards, uh, made some big plays on defense as well. And just, you know, one of those players that was out there being a leader, you know, kind of getting his teammates fired up to, to get them moving on. And honorable mention, might as well just give another game ball. Omaha North, you know, as long as you keep winning as a 16 seed, I'll give you a game ball every week. I don't care. There you go. And Clark, to finish this out. Yeah, I'm going to stick with uh, where I was at uh, just because of uh, I didn't get a chance to see a lot of or, um, what went around the state. But uh Carter Skelba, um, Wilbur Claytonia, uh, caught a nine-yard touchdown pass to give um, the Wolverines a uh, 18-7 lead, and then a few plays later picked off a pass, and then Wilbur went down and dro- drove down and scored again. So he, he had two huge plays that really just changed the momentum of the game in the third quarter. So I'll give it to him and, and, and the Wolverines. I mean, they, they, they're a 13 seed, and they're, now they're playing in the state semifinals. There you go. Semifinal action is next week, and we will have all the coverage of our area schools and other matchups as well. Make sure to catch up on all your reading tonight. We're in Wahoo. Of course, uh, Clark was in Wilbur. Luke was over in Pierce. Uh, We were in Elkhorn and Bennington as well. So everywhere for all the important games, we were there with coverage. Make sure to check out that as well as our in-depth coverage of state volleyball on prepextra.com. That includes tomorrow's coverages of the six finals as well thank you everyone for joining us we'll make sure to have a prep rewind next week as well to break down the semifinals in the finals matchups from clark Grell, luke mullen i've been your host jeff ekstrom thank you so much for joining us we'll talk to you soon